We'll talk about these things in more detail later. There are three times when you must isolate all potential energy sources. Before work is done on any equipment, whenever equipment is not safe to be in operation, when equipment is to be taken out of service for any length of time. Remember, when you're working on equipment out here, there are many sources of energy that can cause serious problems. If you recognize and isolate those energy sources from the work, you keep the job safe. When you work on a piece of equipment, you often use knowledge about different types of energy isolation. You may have to stop pumps, de-energize electrical motors and block liquids and gases to make a repair. While we'll look at these isolation issues separately, remember they're all parts of meeting the whole safety challenge. First, let's look at isolating equipment from electrical energy, mechanical energy, and fluids. The procedure for this type of energy isolation is lockout tagout. Lockout tagout is used frequently when servicing equipment. So it's important to know the procedure and follow it exactly. On an annual basis, all workers should perform lockout tagout procedures in front of a supervisor. In the US, a written evaluation of lockout tagout procedures is an OSHA requirement, but it's a good practice to keep current with procedures everywhere. Turning off a local switch does not de-energize a piece of equipment. Only part of the energizing circuit is broken. An override, a faulty switch, or someone turning on another switch could start the equipment. 